worship involves solitude. Because you, you've got to picture this, the, these four men, okay, God, the two angels, because that's who these other two men were, they were angels, and Abraham are having a meal together. After the meal, they all start walking out of camp. The two angels head toward Sodom and Gomorrah, so what do you have? You just have God and Abraham alone. And do you know what that represents? That, that represents prayer. How do we practice solitude? We practice solitude through prayer. How, how do we worship in solitude? Part of it is through prayer, through saying, God, I'm, I'm just going to take time throughout my day to get alone with you. Now, here's what's interesting about this. The, the Bible says that God was, for a moment anyway, thinking about keeping his plan from Abraham. Because we, we know that God was, was going to judge Sodom and Gomorrah for their wickedness. And so God was at this moment debating, should I tell Abraham about my plan? Because what God was going to say is, regardless of what I do, I'm still going to bless Abraham. Abraham is still going to be the father of a great nation. But what is but you get the sense here that God's saying, should I hold my plan from him or hide my plan and then God's like no because he's my friend I know Abraham I'm not going to keep something from a friend and you know what's remarkable is three times in the Old Testament the Bible says that Abraham was a friend of God that's quite a compliment that's quite a legacy that God looked at this man and said, you know what, we have this relationship. We're friends. I know you. You know me. But here's the encouraging thing in John chapter 15. Jesus one day was standing before his disciples. And do you know what he said to them? He said, now at this moment, I consider you friends. And you can look at the context of that scripture. He said, I'm considering you a friend because... God's told me things, and I'm here to reveal those things to you. I love the fact that God doesn't keep secrets. Oh, come on, church. God reveals things to us because he wants us to know him, but he wants us to understand what is true. So God reveals things. And here's what we need to keep in mind. I want you to see through the text that God did not reveal the future to Abraham until they were alone. This is so important because as people, we need God's direction in our life. We need God's wisdom. We need God's guidance. As parents, we need all the help we can get. Can I get an amen, somebody? Right? Even in our marriage, our relationships, just our day in and day out life, we need God's help and his guidance. We don't always know the step to take. We don't always know the decision that we need to make. And here's the thing. God wants to guide you. He wants to speak to you. He wants to help you. But he can only reveal things to you and me when we take the time to practice solitude. To be in his presence and say, God, I'm showing up today and I'm, I'm worshiping you through prayer. Just telling you how great, great I am for all that you've done for me, but also I need some help. And here's the thing, God will show up and God will guide us. He will help us to know what step to take. The Bible says the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. But do you know how we hear those orders? It's through solitude. Spending time in prayer, worshiping God through prayer. Keep that in mind. Because some of you, you need answers. Some of you, you need direction. And I would just simply say this. Are you spending time in prayer? Are you getting alone with God? I can't answer that. But when you get alone with God, he'll show up, and he'll help you, and he'll guide you. And we see that with Abraham, but then 
comes this twist, comes this, this dilemma. I don't know if that's even the right word, but there's this struggle, and here's what happens. It's, we want to we practice solitude, but the Bible also says that we should serve. How many of you know that that kind of gets confusing sometimes? Sometimes we would, we would even say that's a little bit complicated. Because if, if you look later, you can look up this later, but in Revelation chapter 2, verse 4, God's talking to churches that are in basically modern-day Turkey. And he's kind of examining their lives. And, and he's giving them some compliments. You're doing this well. You're doing this good. But then he also convicts. And in Revelation 2, verse 4, he shows up to the church in Ephesus. And he says, I'm watching you. I'm examining your life. And here's what God says to the church in Ephesus. He says, you don't love me or each other as you did at first. Now here's the dilemma. Again, solitude, service. Solitude, service. Here's what can happen if we're not careful. We can become distracted by the work. And I think what God's kind of saying through Revelation is this. It's possible to serve the Lord but not love the Lord. It's possible to, on the outside, go through the motions and do the right thing, but on the inside, we don't really know him. We don't really have this, this relationship with him. That's possible. And God wants to warn us of that. He, he's saying, don't allow the work to distract you. Yes, I, I want you to serve, but I don't want you to be distracted. And again, I think a good illustration of this is you, if you think back to Lazarus and Mary and Martha, right? Jesus comes to the house for dinner, and Martha was what, church? She was busy preparing the dinner and getting things ready for Jesus while Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet listening to him teach. And then the Bible says that, that Martha comes walking into the room, and what does she begin to do? She begins to complain. Jesus, I'm doing all the work here. I, I, I kind of have this Italian voice in my mind. I don't know why. But it's like, I'm doing all the work here. What's the matter for you? She's not doing anything. She's just sitting here. And what did Jesus do? He kind of, in a in a loving way rebukes her and he says you know what Martha Martha you're busy doing all these things you're distracted yes you're serving but you're allowing the work to distract you from what matters most it's solitude being in my presence being near to me think about this it's the alone time that prepare us for service. See, again, that's the dilemma. I, if we just go, 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 what can end up happening? We burn out. We become exhausted. We, we kind of throw in the towel and say, you know what, I've done my job, Jesus. Now it's somebody else's time because I just can't do it anymore. And so what prepares us to serve is solitude. They go together. It's like what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Well, we need both of them. God desires both of them, that we serve him, but that we also practice solitude. And Abraham shows us this. 